lovely day! Hey guys, Jim here. Welcome in once again. Today we're going to be taking a look at a uh, newer, slightly newer offering from Leon Ma. This is the Model 18. And as you saw in the uh, photographs that I took, it is a full dress model. Absolutely just mind-blowingly gorgeous with moku tie and dama steel and all kinds of crazy materials. I want to show you the packaging first as we get into this. And uh, I got to say, out of all of the Riot packaging, I, I think I like this the most. There's something about this Velcro padded um, sleeve, I guess you could call it, that I really, really like. You get the uh, microfiber cloth in there as well. Uh, because you can lay this down if you were doing any knife maintenance, you were changing out hardware, or changing out your uh, you know, bearings or something. You have a nice, soft, scratch-free surface to, uh, to lay the knife on. So, I don't know. There's just something I like about that. Super cool. Now, before we get into the knife, I want to say a big thank you to a generous buddy of mine, Chris. He goes by Thai Addiction on Instagram, and he is the lucky owner of this knife, and he offered it to me to uh, show to you guys on my channel here and uh, kind of play with for a couple of weeks. So, this is not mine. I do not own it. Uh, this is... Just absolutely gorgeous, and uh, thank you, Chris, so much for trusting me with your beauty. Now, let's get into the knife, shall we? Uh, first off, again, this is made by Riot. This is one of their most premium knives in the most premium price point that they've ever been in. You're looking in the full dress model like this at $1,260. Yes, $1,000. Two hundred and sixty dollars, and I know that sounds like a lot of money for a production knife. Remember, these were very, very limited in production, and you've got very exotic materials, and it is an integral. So, keeping that in mind, a titanium integral frame with moku tie and dama steel, perfectly etched, perfectly mirror polished. You're going to pay a lot of money for it. By comparison, the base model, which is just milled titanium, so no inlays whatsoever, and S90V steel is $599. That's still a premium price point from Riot on their production knives. Uh, and then they have inlay models of carbon fiber and different fat carbon options, and uh, some that are S90V steel and some that are Dama steel and those combinations. And they're anywhere in the 650 to 850 range, and I think just a, a, a touch more uh, when you get like fat carbon and dama steel or something. But uh, yeah, it is a premium price point to be sure, no way around it. That's just the way it is. Now, getting into the specs of this knife, we'll move this over here and we, uh, oh boy, she's a big boy, isn't she? Oh, yeah. Uh, let's put the specs right over here, and we're looking at an overall length of eight and a half inches. Yes, she's a big one. Uh, you've got a blade length of 3.75 inches, so three and three quarter inches. It's going to be big for a lot of people as far as EDC knives go, uh, but there's still plenty of guys out there that carry four and four and a quarter inch blades. Uh, I don't see anybody really having a problem carrying it, uh, but as far as being a, you know, a very lightweight, small EDC, this is not your knife. As mentioned before, this is an integral. It is a full titanium handle, 6AL4V. You have a Chad Nichols Mokutai uh, set of inlays that's on both sides and includes the pocket clip that also has the ceramic bearing in the pocket clip. I'll show you that close up in a little bit. You've got ceramic bearings and a ceramic detent. And uh, we're going to weigh it here in just a couple of minutes. Now, the whole idea behind this knife is ergonomics. It's to be comfortable. 
And honestly, that's something that I think a lot of people tend to overlook when they're designing their knives. The reason why this is called the Model 18 is because this is to commemorate the 18th year that Leong has been in the industry. And designing knives as long as he has, he has a very strong focus on ergonomics. As a matter of fact, there are a lot of his knives that some people may not consider to be all that attractive. Why? Because they were really designed to be more comfortable than they were to be pretty, pretty. I happen to like, I would say probably 99.9% of all of Leon's designs. I think they're all very attractive. He does a really great job with all of them. This one, I don't think visually has the same wonderful balance that his other knives do, meaning that this handle looks a bit chunky compared to the blade, which is, by the way, a loveless style pattern. It's kind of hard to see the grinds in the Damasteel version. There you go. So you see that very prominent swedge that dips down, then comes back up at the tip because it's forced to go up because of the primary grind, and that is, uh, again, replicating that loveless style pattern. Um, so to, to get the ergonomics that he wanted, you've got a slightly beefier handle than you would typically get on many of his designs. So as far as the visual balance, it may be a little bit different than what you're used to from him. But when it comes to comfort, I'm going to tell you right now, he nailed what he was going for. This thumb depression right here, which I think does take away from the overall visual aesthetic of it because it goes from this, this thicker handle down to getting really, really slim looking here and then bulking back up here. It's, it's a little distracting visually, but when you put this in your hand, your fingers, your knuckles, everything goes right where you want it to. It's like you are, the, the knife is being sucked into your grip and it's absolutely perfect. You can then choke up a little bit if you want to because you do have this, it's not really a choil, it's more of just a relief, but you could choke up and then your thumb drops directly onto the jipping right exactly where he designed it. So when it comes to comfort, I really don't see you doing any better than this. You may not want to invest, uh, you know, 1260 figure with, with shipping and or tax if, if that's applicable. You're at, you're at $1,300. You may not want to spend $1,300 on this one, but I would absolutely spend the $599 on the carbon, I'm sorry, on the, uh, the base titanium with the S90 V steel. And the carbon fiber inlay is only like $50 more, I believe. The action, as to be expected from Riot, is just damn near perfect. The detent brake is crisp and clean. It feels fantastic. Perfect flipping action. Nice and smooth on the clothes. Show you the, uh, the details of it here. Look at that Mokutai. Just beautifully done. There is that beg ball. The ceramic ball, uh, this, this type of clip was designed by Todd Begg. Riot uses it quite often with his blessings because he has done a little bit of work with them in the past as well. And a former life, we shall say. And there is that shield-style pivot. And Leon says that the, uh, the, the pivot shape and the triangular shapes that he sometimes puts into his designs uh, is... I think he says it's kind of a reflection on or inspired by the Crusades. Not sure that's the, the, the thing that I would be designing shit after. I mean, that's a, that's a whole lot of death. Um, but I get the inspiration, the, 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 the strength, power, uh, bravery, that whole thing. Yeah, I get that, but I, I probably wouldn't say Crusades, you know, quite possibly most murderous time in history. You know, whatever. <laughs> anyway, um, I think the whole thing comes together great. These uh, The two openings back here so that you can run a lanyard through and tie it off. As you see, this is one solid piece of titanium, which, yeah, of course it's going to cost more because it's more difficult to make a knife 
to cut the lock, fit the lock, do all this stuff, get everything all put together, and make a precision action and a precision knife out of a monoblock, out of one block of titanium. It starts off at just over a half an inch of titanium to get the machine down to the profile that you see here. And then of course they're doing this precision milling here to mill in the pockets. And what you'll notice is the pockets go from creating this faux bolster, almost a keyhole bolster. It comes down to here and then opens up and then your inlays go from being set into a pocket to being standard scales toward the end. So there's a lot of trickery here, and if you're not looking for it, you're not gonna see it. How incredibly cool is that? So yeah, when you're talking about designing a process that's going to do that, you're going to have to spend a lot of money. Nicely contoured all the way down the, uh, down the handle. No hot spots anywhere on this knife. Even where it looks like you've got a hard to find edge, nope, that is nicely rounded off. The scales, I mean, you almost can't even tell there are scales there, except for the difference in the texture of the very, very fine eggshell pattern in the titanium to the smooth mirrored finish of the Mokutai. You almost can't tell that there's anything there. Just stunning. Blade is etched perfectly, mirror polished, etched beautifully. They did a fantastic job on these. Sorry, my camera's losing focus. Cameras do not like mirror polished objects. Great grinds on there and super, super sharp. They did a really nice sweeping plunge. You can see that here as it sweeps in from its full blade thickness and then gently sweeps down to, to meet to the edge. Beautifully done, something that you typically do not see done in production knives, only on customs, because that is extraordinarily difficult to do. And honestly, uh, we as custom makers don't do it for any practical purpose. We do it because it's aesthetically more pleasing. And yeah, it shows a degree of skill that we have in our hands to be able to do that. And it was actually Todd Begg that taught Riot how to uh, perfect that sweeping plunge. So it's very, very cool. And you've also got an area here that's not sharpened because of that. So when you choke up into that depression, you don't have to worry about slicing up your finger at all. So when it comes down to it, what are my thoughts? Is this worth the money? Ah, oh, man, you got to be a pretty serious collector to want to spend uh, basically $1,300 on a production knife. That's a lot of money. Figure you've got a good three, four hundred dollars in Mokutai, just raw materials. Uh, another good three hundred dollars in Dama steel raw materials. That's before you've worked them, you've polished them, you've etched it, uh, before you've done the, the the anodizing and everything. It's it's expensive. The machine time to build uh, an integral titanium uh, knife also very very expensive. So creating uh, this bolster lock style design. This was not an easy knife to design. It was not an easy, easy knife, I'm sure, to uh, communicate over to Riot to explain to them, especially again, how, that, how the inlay goes from an inlay to a scale. Uh, it had to be very, very difficult for, for Leon to, uh, to communicate that and for uh, Riot to just nail that out of the gate. Um, so yeah, I would say if you're a serious collector and you want something that's rare, you want something that's very difficult uh, to have achieved, so you have what, what really is a conversation piece, yes, I do feel that most people are going to feel that that is worth it on a collector's standpoint. For carrying, I don't know, man, 5.9 ounces, that's a big boy. Just for comparison's sake, here's another knife that's very close in size. 5.1 ounces, another one, 5.3 ounces, and more of an EDC style knife, 4.6. So you're looking at a pretty big, heavy knife. So it may not be something that you're going to want to buy to carry all the time, uh, but it certainly is a great showpiece. Here's a size comparison between it and my Terrain 365. 
uh, only a little bit larger, uh, yet considerably heavier than the Terrain 365. Here it is against the Tuya Knife Hive 2, one of my favorite lesser expensive knives. Again, very, very close in size, but the Tuya is considerably lighter in weight. And one more, as you guys know, one of my absolute favorites, also made by Riot. This is the uh, Varganize VBR. And again, there's a major weight difference between the two where the, the Model 18 is significantly heavier. But here's the thing. Those ergonomics, again, even if you don't go into the full dress model, the ergonomics make this worth it. It is so comfortable. It feels so nice to flip, to open and close. Those ceramic bearings are wonderfully smooth. The way that it feels in the hand, it carries in the pocket really well. I got to tell you, obviously, I didn't walk around with it and spend a day with it uh, because it's not my knife and it's very expensive, but I did put it in the pocket a couple of times. And, you know, it doesn't really take up much more room than any other frame lock that I've got that has a contoured frame. You know, obviously a flat bodied frame is, is typically going to be slimmer, uh, but on a contoured frame, which actually the VBR is a contoured frame. Let's uh, see how they compare in the thicknesses. And you know what? It's not very far off. As a matter of fact, I think the VBR, yeah, VBR is actually a little bit thicker. Uh, that's also because the blade stock appears to be thicker as well. So, you know, you've got two Dama steel knives here and uh, I have no fear carrying my Dama steel knife and using it for whatever I need to. Dama steel is an extraordinarily tough, uh, tough customer, man. It's really, really good stuff. If you're getting into Damascus, Dama steel is a great way to go because it's stainless steel. It's all powdered steels that are used for it. So you're getting micro clean super steels that are stainless steel. Um, as it comes out, it is uh, basically formed into one piece of steel instead of uh, being uh, overlapping layers of multiple steels that you would see in a typical Damascus uh, in their very special process, the way that it's made, when it comes out, it is one homogenous piece of steel. So you don't have to worry about delamination. It's made in the same way uh, as Damascus where it's, it's you know, folded and pressed, folded and pressed, uh, but their unique process by using these particular steels the way they do it at Dama Steel does allow it to be one homogenous piece of steel. So you've got a very strong steel, you have a very stain resistant, very uh, corrosion resistant steel, one that does not and cannot delaminate, and it's got superior cutting performance because it can be brought down, oops, sorry, I didn't mean to hit the camera there. It can be brought down to an absolutely ridiculous, crazy thin edge. And that's why a lot of people that look into buying Damascus knives will opt for stainless, I'm sorry, for uh, Dama steel, uh, because it does give you all of the strengths that you want in a super steel with the beauty of having Damascus. And honestly, none of its weaknesses. So uh, pretty, pretty cool stuff, man. Um, I've been a big fan of Dama steel for a very, very long time. And that's uh, pretty much it for the Liang Ma Model 18. Uh, I hope I've covered everything to your satisfaction. If you have any questions, please put them down below. I'd like to thank my buddy Chris again. Uh, please go visit his Instagram at Thai Addiction. He does also have a YouTube channel, but in his own words, he has been too lazy to upload anything. Uh, but he is uh, constantly posting content on Instagram. And you know what? He's a pretty damn cool guy. And every now and then, he buys, sells, and trades. So if you follow him and the awesome collection that he's got, maybe at some point he'll decide, eh, I'm tired of that one. I'm going to buy some other ones. I'm going to put this up for sale. And you might end up with some really, really cool stuff. Uh, I've seen some of the stuff that he sold in the past, and he, does, he doesn't do that thing where he's like, well, I feel this is worth way more because it's so rare. He, he sells his stuff at really good prices and doesn't rip anybody off. So that's refreshing to see in this community. It really is. All right, guys, that's it for me. I'm out of here for now. Thank you all for watching. As always, uh, if you'd like to help support the channel, please join my Patreon. It is growing and growing and growing and getting crazy. 
and I'm going to be doing some more giveaways here very soon. Thank you all for supporting me, and I will see you on the next video.